Now, just to talk a little bit about the practicality of using a Wheatstone bridge, one of the ways we can do this is with an adjustable um, resistor. Um, you can see over here, this, this is a galvanometer. This is just going to tell us if there is a current, right? It's going to, and what direction that current it is. If R1 is sensitive to, say, temperature or strain, then I would make R2 a potentiometer, that adjustable resistor, which we call a pot a lot of times um, in, uh, in <laughs> circuit lingo if you're hanging out with your circuit friends. Uh, that's what the cool kids call it. Uh, we adjust our pot here um, to make sure that we have a balanced bridge, right? So if we balance the bridge, then the temperature changes. This changes, and now it's unbalanced. And so then we change R2 to make sure that the new ratio between R1 and R2 still matches the ratio between R3 and R4. Um, and then we can identify the change in resistance of R1 by looking at our pot, looking at our potentiometer and seeing where we've set that um, and what the resistance of R2 is. And then use our balance equation to figure out what, what R1 is. If we know what R1 is and we know the sensitivity of our system, then we can figure out the change in temperature or strain. So that sensitivity of uh, a wheat zone circuit is going to be how much the change of resistor 1 changes with whatever it is that we're measuring, whatever value. So if the, how much does the resistance of our sensor change when we have a temperature change of 10 degrees. Okay, so that's our sensitivity. So if we have our sensitivity, which is defined for R1, right, our instrument manufacturer should be able to tell us that, uh, and we know the change in R1, then we know the change in temperature. Now, that method, the null method, requires that we adjust a potentiometer, that we look at a galvanometer, see if there's a current. That's not going to work if we have a really fast changing signal, like a beam vibrating, for instance. Uh, and so what we use instead is a deflection method. Uh, and a deflection method, uh, rather than measuring just whether there's a current, actually uses a voltage meter over here that measures the voltage difference uh, between these two uh, different parts of our Wheatstone bridge. Now, we can do a bunch of math uh, <laughs> to to figure out where this equation comes from, but we don't really need to do that. Um, all we need to know is that there's gonna be an equation that tells us as my resistance changes, my output voltage at E naught, essentially my meter reading is gonna change as well, okay? Uh, and that all comes from the kind of analysis that we've done up before now. We could do this math, it's not particularly uh, uh, crazy challenging or anything. It's just a, it's just a circuit analysis. Uh, and that would tell us when that resistance changes, how much is E not changing. And then again, if we had our sensitivity of our resistor, we could uh, calculate at all times what the temperature or the strain in a particular, um, in our sensor was. And that's why we use a Wheatstone bridge instead of just a voltage device.